I predict that 2016 is going to be a boom year. But before you start wondering what's Michael on, to make a comment like that, let me explain. I believe this is going to be a boom year for fright. The media's at it again, and there's no shortage of scary stuff in the press. Things like house prices are unaffordable and going to drop 40%. You know, an overseas person came and said it again. Or the world's economy is stalling, or China's economy is stalling, and it's going to make our markets crash. Interest rates are going to rise. No, they're going to fall. Uh, Kim Kardashian's at it again. You hear all those things in the media. Of course, just about every year is a boom year for fright. As far back as I can remember, there have always been scary stories in the media. Looking back over the years that I've been investing, I've invested through property slowdowns, through stock market crashes, through periods of double digit interest rates, and times when people thought properties were unaffordable and would never go up in value again. Yet despite of all this, the value of my properties keep doubling, allowing me to refinance and buy even more properties and live off my equity. I remember in the late 1980s, the cry was, don't buy houses, they can't go up anymore, your kids will never be able to afford them. Then there were similar headlines in late 2003 and predictions of our property market collapsing occurred in 2008. Only a few years ago, in 2011, when interest rates rose, the property pessimists were out there again, weren't they, saying our markets would crash. But look what happened to property prices since then. There always seems to be scary headlines about a grim future, which could have given me plenty of reasons not to invest in property. Before global warming, there was an op overpopulation crisis that people were talking about with politicians, environmentalists, economists, talking about massive food shortages, rioting in the streets, rampant cannibalism, impending collapse of society. I even remember a panic about global cooling. Of course, the media gets more mileage out of this type of story. They find it hard to get readers interest talking about good jobs growth, a healthy economy compared to other nations, 24 years of continuous economic growth in Australia. To be a successful property investor, you need to step back and take a big picture view and refuse to be scared by the next boogeyman about to jump out of the bushes. The fact is this week somebody's getting married, somebody's looking forward to having a baby, somebody's getting promoted, somebody's getting transferred, somebody's getting divorced. A lot of people are happening to get rich. This year, close to 170,000 new households are going to be formed in Australia, and they're all going to have to live somewhere. Those who can't afford to buy a property, they're going to have to rent. This means the long-term fundamentals, in fact, the medium-term fundamentals for property, are very sound. And if you take a long-term perspective, you'll be able to spot and act on the opportunities that arise this year, as many potential home buyers and investors get scared by all this news in the media. I see 2016 as being a year of great opportunity for property investors if they know where to look. But remember, what you look for is what you see. If you look for the bad news, boy, you're going to find it. On the other hand, if you look for opportunities, you're going to find them too. Our economy is sound, employment is growing, especially in the services sector, our population is increasing, interest rates are likely to fall further, and the lower Australian dollar is encouraging overseas investment and tourism. At the same time, the fundamentals of supply and demand support growth in our three big capital city property markets. However, I recognise that decreasing affordability, changing sentiment and an oversupply in several sectors, especially the CBD and off the plan markets, will create a volatile mix for our markets moving forward. And they are going to slow down a bit. They're going to become buyer's markets in some areas rather than seller's markets. The interesting thing is that smart buyers represent that these markets present them with a smorgasbord of opportunities to step up and take advantage of. I see property price growth in Sydney and Melbourne will be a bit slower this year than last year, but the median house price will be higher at the end of the year than it started. However, house prices are likely to fall a bit in Perth and Darwin as the mining boom continues to unwind. Hobart and Adelaide are likely to see continued moderate growth, and the Brisbane property market should start to pick up further as it plays catch up this year. Nationwide, house price falls are really unlikely to occur before the Reserve Bank raises interest rates, and that's not likely in the near future. This means 2016 will be a good time to educate yourself, to take advantage of the opportunities that this stage of the property market presents. While there's no need for fear, as always, some people will worry. They're going to worry about all the news, and they're going to sit on the sidelines while astute investors set themselves up for the next stage of their lives. 
What are you going to be doing in 2016? If you're looking for some independent advice to help you either get going in the property market or maybe evaluate your current property portfolio, why not have a chat with an independent team at Pet Metropole? We've got no properties for sale but access to every property on the market. So why not have a chat with the team at Metropole to help you steer through the minefields of 2016 and help you walk the right path for your financial future. <music>